Friends, my next guests are no stranger to TV. They were both on a popular reality competition show, but Trevor thinks his wife, Delisa, has taken things too far. She beat her competition by being savvy on social media, but has she been able to return to her normal life? Take a look. I was a contestant on season two of The Circle on Netflix. When you're in The Circle, the most important part is you have to be likable. You have to stay on top in the weekly ranking. I catfished the competition by pretending to be my husband, Trevor, and I won. Circle message, Trevor, Tony is an adorable name, like her father's, dot, dot. I definitely want kids one day just waiting for the right time and waiting for the right guy, dot, dot. Eyes emoji, send. Oh, yeah. Ow. Oh, Chloe's a flirt. Chloe's a big flirt. Message, Chloe, you never know. It might happen sooner than you think. Wink emoji. Ah! Trevor! If I read some guy say something like that, I would be like, damn, daddy, can I... Trevor! Oh, my God. OK, right. Bloody compose yourself, girl. Everyone, welcome Trevor to the show. I will tell you what. I screamed. I screamed because I watched his show. I screamed. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a bit of a fan. That's why you got thank the little you. scream I'm, right there. I'm a big fan too. Uh, thank you, thank you. So tell me, what's going on with you and um, Delisa? My wife, from the minute we met, she's always been attached to her cell phone. Yes. You know, but I feel like since her season of the show came out, it's gotten a lot worse. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like she doesn't want to put it down. I can't get her to make the time for us as a married couple. Mm. You know, we've also got two very small, beautiful kids, beautiful, beautiful daughters. There's not a whole lot of time in the day for us. Before the show, how often did you communicate? Did you talk all the time? Were y'all spending a lot of time? We, we do, we do, what well, we did. Yeah. You know, uh, I just I felt like, you know, we had set up our lives in a way to where we just, we did make more time for us. Tell everybody what show you were on. Uh, so I was on season four of Netflix's show, The Circle. And, and, and uh, your wife was on season three? She was on season two. Season two, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was the winner of season two, uh, which was fantastic. Great for our family. Great for giving us a nice little financial boost. After that, like, her, that really catapulted her, which is great. You know, I, I want those things for her. Uh, but it's like, at what cost? Well, what I think about is interesting is that you said that you prioritize the family. Mm -hmm. So prioritization of the family and of your wife is something important for you. Yes. So do you feel a bit betrayed by the fact that she's not prioritizing you? I do, but yeah. you know, I find it to be now where I think when I complain about these things, she hears me, but I don't think she's listening. We heard Trevor's side of the story, but now I think it's time to hear from Delisa. Friends, help me welcome Delisa to the show. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. This is fandom for me. That was sweet, right? This is, but this is fandom for me. I love you. <laughs> I love you. Get out of here. <laughs> and, oh, my gosh. You look beautiful. You look you stunning. Too. Thank um, you. And we just saw that sweet moment between you both, which, yeah. from this show, watching mm -hmm. it, we know the love you had. We saw the love you had for your children. But how do you feel about what you just heard? As far as me being on my phone and me being into social media, that's my job. That's where I make my money. That's my bread and butter. And that's how, essentially, like, I take care of the family. Mm -hmm. He had his moment where he took care of the family, you know? I mean, and he still does, you of know? Course, like, he yeah. still works and he still does his thing. But there was a time that I wasn't working. And I wanted us to work. So I'm like, I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to support you. We moved to Toronto. And I had, I had nothing. I had him. So you made a big sacrifice then. What other sacrifices have you made in your marriage? Um... I mean, listen, when I did the show, I know it seems like it's just all for fun, but I was away a long time, all right? That was the first time I... Y'all saw me crying, all yeah, right? That was the first kid, time yeah. I left my baby. I don't want to cry right now. I know. Um, that, was, that was hard for me, you yeah. know? And then it was a lot of pressure being on that show. It's a competition. I'm trying to win. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this for my family. I'm trying to do this for us. When I was watching you on the show, one of the things that I did connect with you as a father was, was your sacrifice mm -hmm. for your husband and for your children. I could deeply see how much that was affecting you being on there and being away from the kids. Absolutely. It was a moment in your life where you did something for your family, but you were also doing something for yourself. Mm -hmm. how, how did it feel to know you were doing something for you? It felt good. It felt good. Um, 
because during that time period, it was very tough for us in Toronto. Uh, well, it was very tough for me. Um, I felt like I lost my independence. I gave up a lot, you know? I love him. And I would do it again in a heartbeat, okay? Don't get me wrong. But it was a lot for me. And now I'm at the point where I'm doing what I love. I'm able to make income, take care of our family, do all of that. And yes, it's a lot of work. It's a 24-7 job, all right? And it's not a nine to five, and I don't have that, that luxury, so to speak. And I feel like he needs to understand that. You mm -hmm. know, like if I'm telling you I'm on my phone, I'm working. I'm not on my phone to just be like, oh my God, like, ah, ha, ha, ha. No, yeah. I'm on my phone responding to comments and, it's, it, it really, really, really boggles my mind that I've had to repeat myself so many times. Like, you're really just not, you're not listening. He said like, he feels alone. Mm. He said, Trevor said he feels alone in the relationship. What do you think when you hear that? Um, I think about when we was in Toronto and I felt alone and he was traveling for work all the Got time. It. And we did that for four years. For four years. Now. And what do we, what do we, what do we do? A year and a half? This it is what, it's a year and a half? But, at the end, but. Then give me my but, four years. How about that? You want, really though? I'm just really? saying, we're gonna I'm be petty. no, That's we're petty. not being petty. That's petty. I'm because just we saying you need to understand we the way very, I understood very, for very you. Very, very different place. But within that four years, that time, again, I was able to take care of us. She was able to explore the things that she wanted to do. And within that, and within that time, I understand like we had our we had our issues. Yeah. You know, me being away was what was a big one. And that's why I said when we move, I no longer want to compromise on family. Because, like I said before, if it all goes away, I gotta have my family. But I wanna go back because <laughs> I do think it's important. But I wanna go back because Delisa oh. just said, Delisa just said something that's really look, important. Like, look, look, look. No, it's a beautiful family. It's look a beautiful family. Kid, but I can't, I can't skip over something because I think something is very important here. Delisa just said, when y'all were in Toronto, she felt alone. And she said, for four years, she felt alone. And when she just said that, you were like, it's being petty and wished it away. You didn't hear her. Why Thank couldn't you. you hear when she just said that? Thank you. But, like, but that was, I did hear her. Because that's why we, that's why we made the move. But so that sounds like four years mm -hmm. of her saying, I feel alone. I don't feel like you're prioritizing me. And it sounds like it took to an ultimatum for you to understand. So... And it wasn't even a full four years. Travel was a big part of it. But when I was home, I'd work early part of the day and then I'd be home. Mm -hmm. And then COVID hit. I was literally home what, I don't know, nine, 10 months straight with my family, which again, went into that decision, you know? So granted, I understand that that was a force, that was forced time at home, Yeah. you know? But it allowed me to put things in perspective. I think it allowed us to have more conversations about things, right? So but, are you still working in fitness now? Yes. Okay, great. Do you support his career when he was on television, when he was away, when he, the, in fitness now, do you support it? I support everything he does. Like, mm -hmm. that's my husband, I love him. Whatever he wants to do, I Were you upset him. when he was on the show? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, when he was on the show, I was not upset. Now, when it comes to filming, filming can take a long time. There's this, there's this whole period beforehand. So he was gone a lot longer than I was. And at that time, we had two under two. That was stressful mm. for me, okay? Stressful. When I was gone, it was just, it was just one. one. We only yeah. had one. Okay. Um, How long were you gone for? So let's, because in context, about when, two months. Two months when you're filming. Yeah. He and when was, you had filmed yours, you were gone for three like five weeks. weeks. Five weeks. Five weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, so that was very difficult for me. And um, for the beginning portion of his, uh, when he was gone, um, he wasn't obviously he wasn't filming, right? It, it was a question of. Babe, can you come back home? Okay, I, I was suffering from stress headaches. Yeah. I was, um, my milk supply was going low because I was like trying to breastfeed at the time. And it was, it was just, it was really hard for me. It was really, really difficult. And I wanted him to come back. And he, you know, and I get it. He wanted to have his opportunity. But at the same time, I'm like, I need help. I need, I need help. help. And we don't know if this is even gonna work out. And what was your response when she said, I need help, I want you to come back home? You know, I, uh, I, I, I thought about it quite a bit. I was, I went into it, I was like, I need to do something for my family. And I, and in that moment, I was like, but I know, like, she's the greatest mom I've ever seen. Like, I know she can handle it. And in my head, I'm like, I, I, I probably was not listening, right? And I was like, you can, you're fine, you can handle it. Like, if you need some help, we'll get you some help. Um, 
but I saw it as an opportunity to do something for my family and like something that she she did, you know, mm -hmm. understanding that this could be something really great. And I was going back home to no, nothing coming in financially. Mm -hmm. This was a chance to, to make something happen for me. Um, for How us. do you feel when he just says, I probably wasn't listening, instead of saying, I wasn't listening? Is that a reoccurring thing? That he, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, really? Yeah, what you mean, really? Yes. Okay. I, I've always known that you're the person I want to be with forever, you know? So I'd rather fix this than us go our separate ways. And I just, I just want, I want you back. Like, I want my best friend back. I want to be able to, like, kick it on a random day. I want us, thank you. I want us to prioritize us. As, and I know you're working hard. I, I see everything you do. You make a lot of time for your work. You make an, a, a ton of time for the girls. Like, we got to get back to us. Delisa, what do you want to say? Um. I want to say that you're not going anywhere. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> I love you and you are my best friend also and I don't I don't mean to be so absorbed, but I I do need you to understand that this is something that I always wanted to do. Like I finally got to the point where I'm sorry. No, you're good. Here you go, love. Oh. <sighs> I finally got to the point where I'm able to do something <clears throat> that I'm passionate about, that can make us money and we can live. And I just want you to understand that and support me the way that I feel like I've supported you and I always will support you. Uh, and and I, I know you support me, but I just want you to show it more and I want you to understand and let's figure it out. Let's do what we have to do because like I said, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm not, though. Trevor, I'm not. Trevor, I have to tell you something, because watching this, I do see a lot of love in this relationship, but I do need you to understand one thing. By devaluing her work, you're devaluing her worth. And it's important in this moment that you understand that she has sacrificed for you a lot. And I just heard it over reoccurring, reoccurring. Her sacrifices, you felt, were, like, necessary and were great. But now she's saying to you, I need you to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But you don't have the same patience. Mm -hmm. And would you agree with that? Yes. And I, I do hear when you say, like, but I'm doing things for the family. I'm doing things for us. Mm -hmm. And you're making these decisions because you want to do what's right. Mm -hmm. But she's also saying, I need you to listen to me and understand that this is what's going to make our family stronger. Mm -hmm. This is what we need right now. Not the decision you're going to make. Because right now she's telling you, like, if you just say... I support you and just sit back, mm -hmm. I actually think that things will get better quicker. Because I think you just got to reframe. Mm -hmm. She did it for years. She said that she's still been doing it. Mm -hmm. You got to just give her the chance now. She's telling you with all of her heart and soul, this is my moment to feel like I'm doing something for me. Mm -hmm. She's doing the best she can. Mm -hmm. And I think you already know that. Mm -hmm. But it, the pressure of you saying, well, why not me? Yeah. You got to remove it. And, sit, and instead replace mm -hmm. that with, it's all about you. No. Yeah? Mm -hmm. but, okay. And, That's and, it. And, That's it. I'm telling you. You just do that. From now on, when you start feeling like she's yeah. not giving you enough time, turn to her and say, instead, it's all about you. Let that be your conversation from right now. What would it feel like for you if he just turned to you all the time and said, it's all about you? That would make me so happy. I feel like then I would probably make the time to get what I need done, and then I can probably turn it around on him. Like, now it's all about you. Good. You hear that? Yes. Okay. Practice it right now. Tell her right now. It's all about you, baby. Hey! That was sexy. <laughs> what? I ain't gonna even lie. Look at that. She's sexy now. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us. Come back next time, friends, so we can keep talking and growing. I love you all. Hold on. Where are you going? I'll tell you where you're going. Right here to subscribe, and right here to watch more. Period.